Great. Uh, I'm glad everybody was able to join today. I think this is obviously a topic for anybody that's using um, IDEA and using faculty evaluations. It's obviously a, a key component to it is getting students to be interested, involved, and actually willing to complete the evaluations um, in a way that allows us to help the institution. So what I'm going to talk about is our experience at Flagler College, and I'll give you some background on our institution um, and what we're doing to try to assure that we have the response rates that our faculty, our administration, our accreditors, and then also our students with their buy-in um, get that they feel comfortable. So I'll begin by just talking about us um, so you can kind of contextualize uh, what Flagler looks like versus your own home institution. Uh, we're in St. Augustine, Florida. We have approximately 2,500 students. We are undergraduate only. Um, we are not a liberal arts college. We are rooted in a liberal arts tradition. So from a teaching angle, we pride ourselves on smaller class sizes, individualized attention for students. We are not religiously affiliated. Um, we've been using IDEA since at least 2004. Um, in terms of record keeping, that's, that's where I've been able to go back to, although um, it looks like we may have been a little bit earlier. And then I think most importantly, contextually for Flagler College versus most institutions, is we are a non-tenure granting institution. Um, so even our most senior accomplished faculty are on three-year contracts, um, with the majority of our faculty being on one or two-year contracts, um, which kind of pushes the emphasis on teaching quality, um, and then also obviously the role that IDEA plays in our classroom, and shapes why we care about response rates the way that we do. I'll start by kind of talking about our older approach to using evaluations. And again, this wasn't that long ago. Um, in fall 2014, this last fall, we made the switch from going with the traditional paper and pencil idea evaluations to going online with Campus Labs and IDEA. Um, but to talk about kind of the paradigm before we made that shift, um, we started off, we had basically two different sets of instructions and rules. Uh, for veteran faculty, uh, which were typically faculty that had been here for at least a year, they were permitted to select two courses they were teaching every semester, and our faculty are on a 4 4 load. So they were allowed to choose one upper and one lower. And typically that choice had to be made at some point before the midpoint of the semester. We used the traditional paper and pencil administration, um, and it was kind of a one shot deal. The faculty were able to pick anywhere in a two week window. They would have the forms, and they could choose which day they did the surveys online, or which day they did the surveys in class, um, which allowed them some ability to kind of pick and choose more than we may have liked. Um, and then for new faculty or adjunct faculty, they had all of their courses evaluated, and it was the same thing, the paper and pencil administration, and then kind of the, the one attempt. Um, you had your one day, once the envelopes came back to our office, they were considered done, students couldn't come in that missed or had an absence. Um, so it was really, you know, to some degree limiting and I consider this more of the traditional paradigm. Uh, before I came to Flagler, I was at Southeast Missouri State University in Cape Girardeau, um, where we used the paper and pencil ID administration, and it was sort of the same setup. You'd get your packet, you'd get the week, week and a half window, and you'd have the ability to sort of choose which day you were going to do that, which from a faculty angle, and I still, I still teach probably more than I'd like to in some cases, um, but it was nice being able to kind of look around the room and know when the class was in a good mood, when you had a good lecture, when you had um, good attendance, or at least the attendance the faculty member wanted. Um, so it was working well for the faculty on the old approach. But at the same time, institutionally, we had uh, some, some pretty big concerns. Um, obviously, by using this method, we received a, a really high response rate. Um, because again, students were a captured audience. But what we were considering, and I've been in my position at Flagler for um, almost two years now, first and foremost was the administrative cost of doing the paper and pencil surveys, of shipping them off. Um, I remember last December I was looking for a picture of it today where Melissa had to send us a photograph of one of our boxes that had broken open during transport to Kansas. Uh, we sunk a lot of time into this. Um, and even more importantly there is that second bullet point shows even with a high response rate, with the fact that we were only doing two courses per veteran faculty member, we were only evaluating between 50 and 60 percent of our classes in any given semester. Um, which, while it works, you know, if we had the opportunity to do more, that's what we were always hoping to do. Um, we also had concerns about the faculty role in administration. Um, when I came to Flagler, 
to say that the, the actual administration of the course evaluations was haphazard would be a bit of an understatement, unfortunately. Um, we'd been to, through two or three I, IR directors in the previous 10 years. Um, some wanted the faculty to be in the classroom to assure that students were taking them serious and not talking. Others, of course, followed the more traditional role of you know, the faculty hand it to a student and leave the room. Um, but it was very imbalanced. I had students coming to me my first semester and saying, you know, I have a faculty member walking around the room while I'm doing these evals. I'd have faculty members drop off their envelopes at my door and I'd have to explain why. You know, these evaluations are not going to be um, either appropriate or acceptable. But we also had concerns about the thoughtfulness of students. Um, and again, from my own experiences, we, we have a lot of the 50-minute class sessions. And we had a lot of faculty that were allowing, you know, less than 10 minutes at the end of a course period to actually have students think about these things. And as a result, even in my own courses, I could see that, you know, if I only leave five, six, seven minutes and we're doing the full diagnostic, there's barely time for them to read through and meaningfully assess what I'm doing, let alone add comments. And when we looked institutionally at the last four to five years of what we were getting back, despite the high response rate, in terms of substantive comments that were actually allowing faculty to, to kind of contextualize what students were thinking or saying or doing, um, we weren't getting the comments that allowed us to do that. So we were seeking a way that would permit students to more thoughtfully um, and perhaps on their own time be able to, to add comments that would help faculty actually fix their courses. So beginning in fall 2014, we made the paradigm shift and we went with Campus Labs. Um, and the big thing that I pushed from the administrative and the accreditation angle um, is that first of all, for all faculty, we would now have the same standards. Every course will be evaluated every semester. Um, we would do it online through Campus Labs and we would have the ability to kind of run it with multiple approaches to assure response rates and get to where we want. It gave us the added flexibility, which, which is the big goal I want to talk about is kind of how we walked through um, those additional approaches and what we were able to do to increase the response rate. Uh, when we introduced this, the faculty uh, were not happy. Um, some faculty, at least, were not happy, um, especially the faculty that were sort of the old guard of our institution and had figured out how they felt idea worked for them to maximize scores, which was the comment I received most was, you know, what is this going to do to my idea evaluations and my scores? Which again, here, non-tenure granting institution, I understand the fear, um, but the common response was, if you're doing your job in the classroom and you're listening to students and paying attention to your room, your students are going to be giving you similar results. Uh, these are some direct responses I received from faculty and email. Students will never take the survey online. Not every student has the capability to complete it online. And then my favorite, they'll all sit together and talk negatively about me. So there's this fear of this herd mentality that if we do this online, you know, 10 students are going to get together in the library and they're going to badmouth me and it's just going to become, you know, kind of the groupthink mentality and we'll never be able to get decent evaluations. Um, to kind of debunk the second bullet point on not every student having the capability to complete it online, uh, we brought in the freshman class of 673 students this fall. At the main student orientation during the last week of August, uh, my wife's the director of the first year experience. She was kind enough to ask the class, ask the freshman class at that point, anybody who didn't have a cell phone, a tablet, or a laptop that would not be able to complete a survey at that moment, and there was not a single hand that went up. So again, that's our campus, which again, admittedly, is potentially unique in that circumstance. But from the faculty angle, it was convincing them that no, this is actually going to be helpful to get more data points and to get more information and to be able to make use of this. So again, some faculty weren't happy at the beginning. Um, and the biggest concern they had with going online was the idea of a response rate. Um, they were worried that kids weren't going to take this. They had heard you know, horror stories and self-created horror stories about you know, other institutions where they go online and they only get a you 24% know, response rate. And if their contract's going to be decided based on student feedback, they want to know that they're getting more students than just that 24%. Um, so we set a campus-wide goal early on that we would have over 70% of our enrolled students completing evaluations every semester. And again, that's for every course, um, which includes every independent study. Anything that shows up with a course prefix and a course number, we send an eval out for and suggest to the faculty members 
that they go through and make sure that they make that system work for them. Our biggest concern, for those of you that are Monty Python fans, you can see our favorite rabbit there. Um, our biggest concern was the idea as well of having a punitive approach. And we had a campus-wide conversation on how are we going to get the response rate. And obviously the two options are figuring out either are we going to use a carrot or are we going to use a stick. Um, and the faculty especially, along with myself, were opposed to using the punitive approach. Um, and again, some of the things we've heard at other campuses, blocking students from being able to see their grades or at least being able to see their grades immediately, um, blocking registration, um, some institutions not using IDEA where we've seen that course evaluations are being completed at the time of graduation for courses they'd taken two years prior. Um, and it's funny because we have this kind of punitive stick approach built into our catalog. Um, you know, we have a list of requirements inside the catalog, including the Bachelor of Arts degree is awarded to students who meet the following conditions. And one of those conditions is completion of various forms of institutional or departmental assessment, including exam surveys and focus groups. Specific requirements include completion of IDEA faculty course evaluations prior to the end of each semester in which the course was taken. Um, so we have the carrot looming, and we never liked to use it, and we didn't want to use it. And we went online, we really wanted to push away from having to think about using these types of measures. And the other element, again, was kind of the faculty push on our campus. Um, again, one of the main considerations that goes into raise pay, that goes into potential promotion, that goes into contract one, is what students are saying on these evals. And faculty had this vision in their head of, we're going to have students that are filling out an evaluation to simply be able to register for classes for the next term that aren't going to be caring about what they put, how they put it, or what impact it has larger than them getting to register. So there was some strong opposition to the idea that we would make that kind of the approach we take. So we went in another direction. Um, one of the biggest things we preached to our incoming freshmen is the idea of student autonomy. And that picture at the bottom there is a railroad spoke. Um, Flagler College, Henry Flagler, Florida East Coast Railroad to the Florida Keys. Um, and we have a, a portion of the freshman orientation where we kind of sit them down and give them all commemorative railroad spikes and talk about building your legacy and the choices Flagler had to make and how he chose different approaches to business and life and how they're going to make those same types of choices over the next four years. So after kind of stressing that and preaching that image, it's hard for us to then stand there and point to a page in the catalog and say, you will take these course evaluations, you will do them every semester. Instead, we decided that it was our job, both in institutional research, as faculty, and the academic programs, to make sure that we demonstrate to students why they should complete the course evaluations and why they should take them seriously. So again, kind of pushing it back on them as this is going to benefit you by allowing us to better serve student needs. And if we go and look at our results, we've done four different administrations, three from the fall and one from the spring so far. And again, we've, you know, we've been very happy um, with the percentages that have come back, um, especially in our public administration program, which is our evening program, where we've had you know, above 80% every semester, including over 90% uh, the first eight weeks of the spring. And for the fall 2014 Maine, it's almost 74%. You know, the nice part is we're actually even happier about that number because what we didn't do in the fall on our first run through was go back and correct our course rosters to eliminate students that had been withdrawn already. Um, so if we'd done that, we actually think we'd be over 75%. Um, which again, I'm showing you this to kind of show that what I'm about to tell you on how we managed to do this really does um, deliver success and does allow for students to, to take these series seriously and complete them. Um, and again, for faculty, just to kind of add the the non-direct measure there. Faculty have been very satisfied across the board um, with what we've been able to do with the online idea. I mean, it hasn't always been perfect. We have some faculty who still feel like since we've gone online, their numbers should be better or worse, or they're blaming you know, a bad semester on the system. But over time, we expect that to balance out. The number one thing is what we were hoping for. Um, we have seen a drastic increase in both the number of comments and the depth put into comments. Um, and as an idea, you know, we used to hand write out every student comment and type it out so that way it wasn't showing um, who might have wrote it. 
Um, we had classes in the past where they'd have maybe one or two individual lines. Um, I had personally classes last fall where I had approximately two and a half, three pages of typed entered comments by students um, talking about what they liked, what they didn't like, um, and what they'd like to see done differently. The response rates we've been happy with, faculty have been happy with the fact that this has taken less class time from them, and we'll talk about the idea that we still encourage faculty to make this a part of their course and make this something they devote time to, but it's still faster for the students to complete this on a mobile device than it has been for them to fill out the bubble sheets. Um, and then also, obviously, the customization options. As opposed to the paper and pencil, faculty have been able to add comments more directly and more seamlessly that get at the heart of issues that they feel are important. And now they're not having to worry about you know, holding on to the piece of paper that lists out the last 10 special questions they asked um, in fear of losing it before the results were turned. So if we go and look at the actual method, and we'll start the method with the basic beginning where faculty are still told that it is in their best interest to set aside a day and a time to complete the evaluations in class um, if they wish, along with being able to discuss with students you know, the overview of the course and kind of just discuss what they're doing and what they'd like to see and what would be beneficial from them. And because of the potential accessibility need, we do have learner tablets available. So if a faculty member knows they're doing evaluations on Friday and they have two students that won't be able to bring a laptop, a cell phone, a tablet, something else, they can come to our office, check those out, take them, have the student complete the evaluation with their classmates and then bring them back. Um, but more importantly than just reminding faculty of that, we have put a significant effort into designing a communication plan designed to reach all students. And when I say all students, um, we're really aiming to make sure that we're reaching not just our very motivated students, not reaching our students who are not satisfied with a course that are looking to be more um, destructive than constructive when talking to faculty. Um, so really designing something that makes uh, a more holistic approach to gaining all student interest. And again, we start that with a pre-administration social media and campus media blast. Um, and again, I have lots of images I'm going to show over the next sets of slides that are true images we've used, um, or ones that are going into cycle this session, um, that kind of demonstrate the approach we're taking. Um, this one in particular, brace yourselves, course evals are coming. This will go out four days before course evaluations open just to get students thinking. Um, and it will come with some information in the email on here are the different objectives you're going to see. Start thinking about your courses and what's worked and hasn't worked. Go back and look at your syllabus and see what the instructor said you were going to do and start trying to determine what's coming. So this is just all about getting students thinking um, about course evaluations and their courses in this way. Then we do the initial, the initial email at the beginning of the administration. And the initial email is the one that we say has the more serious tone. Um, this is the one where we discuss the importance of course evals and we talk about student responsibility and completing them. And the key thing we put in here from the faculty angle is that we remind students to follow the direction of their faculty. We have faculty that want to do this evaluation the last week of the course because they have a major project or a major theme they're wrapping up. And they'll want to tell their students, even though they're open on April 12th, I would prefer you take it after April 18th. So we try to make it possible for the faculty member, for pedagogical reasons especially, to still give the students some guidance. Now there's no way they can prevent them from going into the system and not filling it out. But we do want faculty to feel like their wishes are being honored in terms of timing, while still putting enough of a window that students have time to do these um, in a meaningful, constructive way as it's as convenient as possible for them. And again, just to show some sample language out of that initial email. Uh, these results are used by the institution to improve teaching, assure students are receiving best instruction possible. Each semester, the results are looked at by the faculty, department chairs, and administration. Honest feedback helps us in our efforts. Um, take the evaluation seriously. They're our only opportunity to measure your satisfaction or dissatisfaction with your courses this semester, especially in a systemic way. Um, so again, a more serious language, much more of a, these are useful from the institution standpoint, the faculty standpoint, and for you in the future. Then we get into follow-up emails. And again, when I say they're less serious in tone, these are still very serious and we're still pushing 
for students to take ownership over the evaluation process. But we're doing it in a way that is more relatable to every student. Um, one of the things we do is we have faculty provide short case studies, and again, really short. Uh, we go to different departments and programs and kind of ask for, give us an example of some time in the last five years you saw something in your idea data or in the comments and you made an immediate change. So we attempt to kind of send those messages to faculty that students are going to know. So it might say that, you know, there's a short two, two line quip from me about, you know, three semesters ago my students told me that I was assigning too much reading at the beginning of the semester, so I worked to space out my syllabus. Um, the next semester I taught the course. Just something that lets them see that this is really useful and something to look at. And we also keep them regularly updated on the response rate. Um, again, you can kind of see the sample graphic there um, where we just go through on our shield and as students fill it out, we apply as appropriate. So that way there's a constant measure. And it also, as we get later into the administration, when that's showing 70, 71, 72 percent, we can start with the emails that kind of put the peer pressure angle on even more. Sample language here, um, and again, this shows when I say it's less serious. This is what we mean. Um, I know you're tired of hearing from my office about these, but they really are important. It will take less than five minutes per course to complete. We've extended the deadline, um, and we really hope you'll take the time to complete them. However, the sooner you complete them, the sooner we can stop reminding you. Um, and again, that's a message we used in December that got a immediate response. Um, that one was about an eight-point uptick overnight from that being sent. Uh, another one, yes, it's us again. Looks like you still haven't completed course evaluations, and then we list out their course. We won't notify you anymore about this, just reminding you that your ability to evaluate will close on Sunday night at midnight. Log in now, even from your cell phone, to do your part. Um, so again, speaking it in a way that we're still pushing the idea that this is important, but we're not sitting there making them reread that initial message every time with, you need to do this because it matters. Because for some students, you're not going to be able to convince them over the course of an idea administration that it does matter. Um, and it's still important to get their feedback. And then we go through and we actually use these types of images um, written in consultation with our student workers, uh, kind of pilot tested in classes that I teach to see what students will see and react. So they're used in email and they're used um, across campus as best as possible. They're used in social media. Um, don't like the class? Tell me again how you don't care about doing your course evals. Um, you can just fill out your course evals. That would be great from office space. Uh, I don't always do my course evals, but when I do, I stop getting these reminder emails. And the goal with these is to really reach the students at, at a level that shows the importance, but at the same time gets them to complete. And we have had faculty that have not necessarily loved uh, this approach, or they didn't love the approach until they started seeing that students were actually responding to it. Um, and, you know, it, it's to me, no surprise to say that these types of images and those less structured, less formal emails are actually the ones that got students to respond. Um, we would send some of those emails and get responses from students saying, you know, I really wasn't going to do this, but that's pretty clever. I went ahead and filled out my emails. Um, on some of the images, you know, they write back and they say, like, you know, I figured that if I laughed at this, I owe it to you to fill out an email or two. Um, so it's a way to reach them in a different way. Um, that helps keep that response rate up. And some of the tricks we've used. Um, the Campus Labs URL address is fine. Um, flagger.campuslabs.com forward slash, you know, um, course email. Uh, but for us, our faculty are the ones we're worried about. The students are asking them if they've deleted the email, what is it? So we did a redirect to just flagler.edu forward slash course evaluations um, because that was more easily ingrained in their head. Um, and it allowed to make sure that students were going to the right place. We have used students to help craft our messaging. Um, you know, it's kind of ironic. The, the first email that goes out from my office comes out from, you know, Dr. Will Miller, Director of Institutional Research. By the time the last email, I basically at that point, begging them to complete this goes out, it's now, you know, signed Will and Christine in Institutional Research. We're really trying to just show that you're trying, we're trying to get you to help your learning environment and help what's happening in the classrooms. Again, making sure we have appropriate seriousness in each email, in each message. We may be using those images and reaching students that way, but we're still explaining to them this is important and you need to think about it and take them seriously. Um, it's going to be even easier with, you know, in three years, once we've rotated out students who have had both the online and the paper and pencil uh, versions, 
I think we're going to be able to more easily have them used to this from the very beginning, which should increase the response rates even more. But for now, it's about having that balance between what we're doing. Um, and then lastly, you know, in terms of the tricks, the subject lines of emails. Uh, the best email in terms of an email and then an immediate turn and response and an increase in completion percentage was one where we actually, in parentheses at the end of the email, put pretty please. Um, and again, with that, it was looking at responses, comments to it, and we literally just put, please take five minutes to do your evaluation, and then in parentheses, okay, pretty please. And students responded to that. Um, and the way, you know, I saw, just saw Margaret's question in the chat box, and it's a good time to answer. Um, we're able to track each reminder and basically see this by constantly pulling the data um, out of Campus Labs and into Excel and being able to track timing-wise, what messages went out, and then what was the response immediately after. Now again, we can't say for certain they clicked the link in that email, um, but we do carefully track this, especially um, the first time we use different tones, different messaging, different images, just to see what are students responding to, what aren't they, um, and how is that sort of benefiting us long term. So again, the big conclusion from my end is Unlike what a lot of faculty told me when we first announced at a faculty meeting, we were going online with IDEA entirely. Uh, we are requiring all four of your classes to be eval every semester, no matter what. Um, and again, most impressively, and potentially most terrifying from the faculty, and we did this over a summer without a lot of faculty input on the idea that we were making the switch. We told them they would have a lot of input and control over how we implement, but that we were doing this without going through some of the formal channels because it was the same instrument. Um, and we didn't have to use the, the strict requirements. We didn't have to use the you must language. We didn't have to use the threats. Um, and because of that, I think our faculty and our students are much happier with the eval system. Um, and even more importantly, uh, they're taking it seriously. I had a few students already this semester as we get ready for our administration sort of asking the you know, what are you guys going to do this time? What are the emails going to read like? Um, what have you found online that you're going to turn into something that is geared towards getting us to fill these forms out in care? And with that type of anticipation and excitement, I feel like, you know, to some degree, you know, they're more excited about filling out evals than I've seen a campus. Um, they're more excited than I ever was as a student. I know that. This was never something you, you looked forward to. This was kind of a something you have to do. Um, it's important to realize that there all are alternatives um, and there are of carrots. And again, this is a no cost carrot for us. There's no prizes, there's no drawings, there's nothing like that. It's just, you know, run a measure that makes it competitive by telling them what we want to get to and let them track as we go. Um, and at the same time, just send them messages that aren't the same form emails they get from administrators, especially even on our campus day in and day out. Make it something that's different and unique and stands out that they're looking for. Um, and again, don't be afraid, in terms of the conclusion, to experiment with the methods and tone that you use. Uh, there were a lot of people when I first kind of pushed out these messages that looked at me like I'd grown a second head and lost my mind. Um, and there was a point where I'd, I'd worried about that myself, but then seeing the responses come in after sending these messages um, just sort of reaffirms that this is something that can work and can be possible. Um, and with that, I'm, that's kind of my story on what we've done and worked to increase response rates in a way that has left students feeling good and not like they're being pressured to do this. Um, so I'm open to any questions or any discussion about um, paper versus online, response rate increases, anything anybody would like to talk about. Okay, well, it looks like Margaret Weck has a question. How do you know who specifically needs each level of reminder? Um, and Margaret, in terms of level of reminder, we don't use the automatic reminders generated within Campus Labs. Um, we have, and I've talked to Jeff, I know Jessica, I think, is on the call. Um, we have always worked by pulling into Excel and kind of making sure we know who we're sending to. Um, we also like to be very specific with telling them, here are the courses you have in eval. We get a lot of times where a student does four out of five and forgets the fifth. Um, and if we send them and say, you haven't done your evals through the standard form response, um, you know, we tend to get the response, oh, no, I did them. Um, and 
you know, it's it, we have it set now, so it's pretty automated. I'm definitely with you, Margaret. I just saw your response. I, we're an office of two, um, but we've been able to sort of standardize it using Excel. I think everything we do is doable through the Campus Lab system. Um, I don't know if necessarily I would say that using separate emails the way we are is is required by any means. Um, and we'll probably, with this administration, actually try to use um, their system a little bit more now that we have a better understanding of it. But I think the key has just been, you know, if we want to target it, which again, students respond to targeted messages better than the form message. Um, and by kind of pulling some of the data out and teasing through it, we've been able to better do that. Uh, Catherine, I just saw your question as well. Um, this is always a concern. The big thing I do to really push the anonymity um, is I have a good number of faculty, and we have 106 full-time faculty members, and I have between 20 and 25 that I work very closely with in terms of administering ID and what we talk about and what their ideas are. One of the things we do is we let students into the back end in class. Um, my big thing is, you know, I go to student government, I go to the bigger student groups, and just log in as me, as a faculty member, not just as an administrator, and let them see what I'm seeing. Um, I have had to have that exact conversation with students where they get the reminder and they think their results are being seen. But once I've kind of been able to demonstrate to them, this is what I get and what it looks like. Um, and, you know, that's kind of, from our end, that satisfied most of their concerns. We're also working on updating our website. And in that website, I'm actually going to put up screenshots specific to the concern of it's not really anonymous. Um, where they can see that you know we can't we can know who did it and didn't do it, but we can't see uh, the actual results necessarily. Um, and Jennifer, I just saw yours for the automated email messaging, and if you say it felt like spam, that's that's always my concern with using it straight out of the system. Um, you know, one of the benefits of pulling it out is you know there are a couple of these where we'll send it from my personal email address. There are some that we send from kind of our generic research address. There. Are, you know, the first one occasionally, some semesters, we send from the Vice President for Academic Affairs. Um, and again, if the messaging is different and the messenger is different, um, we hope not to make them feel that way. And we also try to give them time in between. Um, we had one round of messaging in December where I actually added, you know, if you don't do the campus, if you don't do your evaluation, I promise you're still not going to hear from me for another three days. So it's not like we're doing this as a daily um, task where it gets to the point where it's annoying. We try to space it out where you know you have the opportunity to actually respond and complete the evaluation before we're all of a sudden back um, telling you, hey, you still haven't done it and then we told you 15 minutes ago, why aren't you doing it? If you have any other questions, you're welcome to ask them in the chat box. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining us for this discussion. Um, I'll let you know now. We do have another one coming up later this month that we're going to announce and send out in the email that goes out with this recording. Uh, just so you know, we are doing one on the IDEA pilot, which is happening now at the end of the semester on the IDEA CL platform. And that will be the week of the 20th. Um, it's actually going to be Tuesday the 21st at 10 a.m. So we're going to do that and we'll be sending that out in an email soon. And we might also have one in May coming up. And we will soon be talking about those to be offered this summer. So if you would like to give a webinar presentation, please let us know. Also, if there are topics that you would like to have been discussed or to be discussed in these, please let us know as well. And real quick, Margaret, just to your question on having the same students not filling out course emails every semester. Uh, the only actual program we can look at that right now in is our public administration program. 
um, which has about 106 students because they're the only ones we've actually used the online system for over two semesters. We're just getting ready to start our spring administration with our main student body. Um, and I will tell you that uh, some of the habitual non-completers are the same both semester. Um, what I like about the online system is we're going to be able to actually answer that question uh, with a much better accuracy than we would otherwise. Um, so, you know, right now I would say yes, we do have some of the same students. Um, and what we're working through right now internally is figuring out what messaging are we going to use and what discussion, and is that something where we eventually want to consider notifying advisors for, you know, the, we have all faculty advising, so, you know, if we have an advisor in your major who's sitting down and saying, we'd really appreciate it if you would take at these course evaluations, why aren't you figuring out what the problem is? Um, that's a door that's now open to us that we didn't otherwise. Um, and Julie, just seeing your question about the sh challenges. Um, you know, it's interesting. Flagler, we're, we're sort of unique with Campus Labs. We started with Campus Labs on course evaluation. Um, and then in December, January, decided that we were going to move uh, pretty much everything we do in assessment towards Campus Labs. Um, so right now, it's really uh, integrating, uh, making sure we're going to be able to integrate. Um, you know, there's, there's things, and Jessica's on here, and I've talked to Jessica at length about it. You know, we want to get things to a point where it's tweaked to where faculty, if I teach POS 200 this fall and I teach it next spring, that it just auto-fills. Um, there's lots of just very minor tweaks at this point. Um, from, a, from a site standpoint, I mean, I can't say enough great things about uh, what Campus Labs has done with IDEA um, and what they've done to make it even more usable. Um, and it worked great for us because we love the IDEA surveys. And we really, 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 oh, Jessica, that's actually very good to know. Um, um, we really, really, really like the idea, and we really wanted to go online. Um, and Campus Labs is the perfect platform to do that with. Um, I actually did see that, Jessica, in the update that you can now do that. I forgot that you can look back and see. Um, but I think it's just tweaking and getting our students used to it. Small programs. Jeanette, if you can give just a little more detail, is that like a learning community? Um, oh, I got it. So it's different courses. I see. Um, that does get tough. Um, we do have a couple of programs that are like that. If they are um, philosophy and religion for us, there's four full-time faculty. If you're taking one of their courses, you're going to have multiples. Um, that is an issue. The, the thing that we always try to frame it as is it's not just the instructor, it's also the course. Um, we just went through a full redo, we're in the process of finishing a full redo of curriculum mapping, objectives, outcomes, um, mission statements. And one of the things we're going to work on next fall is pushing the students the idea that, you know, this is your program and it's not just the instructor, it's the course as well. Um, the other thing that I would think about too in that case uh, Jeanette is maybe not using the full diagnostic form for every one of those courses. Um, if you know you're going to have roughly the same students, there's you know there's some benefit, and we'll think in the future about it to using uh, the short form for some courses, the the full diagnostic for others, and figuring out a way to balance that. But the idea of small programs is a perfect place to consider that, where you know I don't need to do the full sheet again, but I might want to do it, you know, just the 10, 12 question basis. Um, and Elaine, to answer your question, we offered our first online class ever this spring. Um, so we actually are, you know, we, we're not really sure on what that's going to do. And we're not really sure yet how that's going to work. Summer is our first time that we're really going to have a lot of online courses. Um, but I do feel much more confident um, that everything's on Campus Labs together versus ways we've had to work it in other places. Like I said, I was at Southeast Missouri State and we had, um, and I was just faculty there, but had paper copies of idea for some things, had online idea for online things, and you know, you always end up feeling like you're comparing apples to apples, but you forget how you get there. Um, and you know, Jenna, just your comment there. I mean, anybody on here, if, you, if you'd like to contact me, talk, use our materials, discuss campus labs, discuss what we're doing with idea, um, I'm available at any time. Uh, Wmiller at flagler.edu.
Well, thank you very much, Will. Uh, we hope everyone's been able to enjoy their coffee or lunch or whatever you may have there in front of you. Uh, we really enjoy these client-led presentations because they bring to the table so much more than what we can tell you and you are able to actually have a discussion as clients. So thank you again, Will, and if you have any other questions, feel free to type them in. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now, and have a great day.